Hello and welcome to English Rio Residential Arts Centre's live Facebook page and today's episode of The Man Who Knows Everything. And that's me. What happens is every single day I am going to give you a different topic and you will have 24 hours to research that topic and you've got to find 10 facts to do with it and then join me the following weekday and I will give you my 10 facts. If you have got that fact on your list you need to cross it off. If you've got a fact that I ain't got and you're technically defeated, the man who knows everything, but as I've said before, there is nothing I don't know. It's just stuff that I don't say. Um, if you've got a topic that you want to suggest, then you can stick it in the comments below, get an adult to do that for you. And then uh, if you've got a fact that I don't give, you can stick that in the comments as well. So today's topic is William Shakespeare. And that's because yesterday is the day that we celebrate William Shakespeare's birthday. And if you join me in yesterday's video, you'll know that I say we celebrated on that day because we don't actually know when he was born. Um, we know that he was baptised on the 26th of April, um, but we don't actually know what day he was born on. So we celebrated on April 23rd. So here are more 10 facts about William Shakespeare, the Bard. So. My first fact is he was born in 1564. And this is quite a broad fact about his life. And in his lifetime, he wrote approximately 37 plays. Now, the reason we say approximately is he might well have written more than those, and but they've just not been found or they've been lost in history. Because obviously 1564 is quite a long time ago. So he wrote around approximately 37 plays. There's also questions around whether he wrote all of them. Uh, and he might have written them with a bit of help from somebody else. So we say he wrote approximately 37 plays and he wrote over 170 poems. I know, that's an awful lot of writing in your lifetime, eh? So that's my first fact. And his plays can be separated into four category, categories, comedies, tragedies, histories, and romances. So those are the four categories of plays that we put um, Shakespeare's plays in. So that is fact number one, quite a broad fact. Fact number two is that he was born in 1564 in Stratford upon Avon and his mom was called Mary Arden and she was an heiress to a wealthy family and his dad was called John Shakespeare and he was a glove, ma glove maker and leather worker. So he made really fine goods and so I think that's probably how he met Mary in the first place. And Shakespeare, William Shakespeare, was one of eight children that Mary and John had. So William Shakespeare had, had seven siblings and uh, his mum and dad were John and Mary in Stratford-upon-Avon, which if you go to Stratford-upon-Avon nowadays, you'll find the home of the Royal Shakespeare Company. So they've got a big theatre there and they put on loads of Shakespeare plays and lots of other stuff throughout the year. So my next fact is, in 1582, William Shakespeare married himself. He didn't marry himself. He married um, a woman called Anne Hathaway. Now, not the um, actress that's won an Oscar for being in Lesbies. No. So he married a woman called Anne Hathaway, and together they had three children themselves. He had a daughter called Susanna, and then he had twin daughters called... Uh, twins, sorry, called Judith and Hamnet. So, um, it sounds a lot like Hamnet, don't we? So Judith and Hamnet were their twins and twins actually appear in some of Shakespeare's plays in Twelfth Night, I think, for some twins. So maybe that inspired him to put it in his plays. So that was fact number three. In 1582, he got married to Anne Hathaway. They had three children, Susanna and twins, Judith and Hamnet. In 1584, this is an interesting fact because it's kind of a fact that's not a fact because the stuff that we don't know about Shakespeare because he disappeared from all records for seven years. So in 1585, that was the last that we heard of Shakespeare for a while. So he disappeared from records for seven years. And this is what historians refer to as the lost years. So 1585, he disappeared from records. Fact number five, in 1592, he appeared again as a writer and an actor, a playwright and actor on the census. And um, he'd started to make his trade in London by that time as well. Now, it wasn't an easy time for him because he'd got some rivals. They were not 
So but not everybody was a fan of um, William Shakespeare. You know, there were lots of other people who were a little bit jealous of him and other playwrights that didn't really like him. There was a man called Robert Greene who referred to him as an upstart crow. And you might have heard that phrase before because there's a BBC television series called Upstart Crow. It's all about William Shakespeare. So, yeah, they obviously got that from the insult that Robert Greene gave. So in 1592, he reappeared as a playwright and an actor on the census. And uh, his rival was Robert Green. Um, fact number six is that he performed as well as writing as part of the Lord Chamberlain's men. Um, and they had a bit of a dispute with the landlord about the theatre. And so what they did is they dismantled it and rebuilt it over the river, um, which is uh, where the Globe is. So uh, they rebuilt their own theatre called the Globe. Um, fact number seven, I think we're on, is that the theatre... Um, for the, Glo the Globe Theatre was, uh, and other theatres at the time, were there for their main entertainment of the people because one more chance going on because obviously the day had televisions or cinemas to go to. So everybody would go to the theatre and there was lots of different ticket prices. So if you were not very rich, you could be a groundling, which means that you would get a ticket on the lower level. It's basically just like a big courtyard and you'd have to stand for the whole performance. And if you were richer, you could afford to get a seat a little bit further up. Now, not only did you have a seat, you were also undercover because the Globe Theatre has got no ceiling, it's got no roof. So it's like a big circle, like a big donut, and in the middle is a big hole. So if you were a groundling and it rained, you'd get rained on. Whereas if you were a bit richer, you could afford a seat and you'd be undercover as well. Um, so fact number eight is that the theatre was very different in those days. If you've ever been to the theatre, you'll know that it's very quiet. All the lights going down and then you hush and you just watch the show. Whereas in Shakespeare's day, it was a very different place. It was a very dangerous place as well. So particularly in the ground things with all the poor people and the rowdy people, they would shout during the performances. They would throw food at the actors sometimes if they don't like what was going on on stage. And um, there might even be some dodgy dealings going in to, around the groundlings as well. So it was quite a risky place to be. Um, and also, back in the day, there were no female actors. So there weren't any female actors on the stage in Shakespeare's day. So all the female parts had to be played by men as well. So there were no females on the stage at that time. Then fact number nine is that even though it was hundreds of years ago, they did use special effects in their performances. So they could make people appear and disappear by using trap doors in the floor that would flip open and people would pop out of them or would flip open and someone would disappear through it. They used smoke, they used fire, they used cannonballs, all sorts of stuff that would fire cannons during the performances. They would even attach wires to the actors to make them fly. And this was obviously hundreds of years ago, and I don't think they had any health and safety back in that day. So it was a little bit dangerous. And in fact, the globe actually set fire, uh, the roof of the globe set fire when uh, it caught fire because of these special effects. My final fact is that obviously Shakespeare went on to be very, very popular because we still know who he is today and we still study his plays and we still perform his plays as well. Um, so he got royal approval um, from both Queen Elizabeth I and James I. They uh, had Shakespeare plays performed in their court. Sometimes they even popped along to the globe uh, to go and see performances as well. And back in, uh, he obviously became very rich then. So in 1598, um, Shakespeare is on record as owning houses in London and back in Stratford as well. So he became quite a wealthy man off the back of his creativity. So those are my 10 facts about William Shakespeare. If you've got them on your list, then cross them off. If you've got a fact that I don't mention, get an adult to help you post it in the comments below. Now, obviously it's the weekend, so you've got a whole weekend to research your next topic. So it's not gonna be until Monday. And because we're coming back on Monday, I've had a little look. And Monday is International Morse Code Day. So that's what's going to be our topic for Monday. So you've got until Monday to do as much research as you can about the subject of Morse code. If you don't know what that is, get cracking, find out. If you do know what it is and you know any facts that are in your brain, which is great, 
If not, look it up in some books or get an adult to help you look it up on the internet. So if you've got a fact that I do give, get an adult to pop it in the comments. Or if you want to challenge me to a topic, get somebody to stick that in the comments as well. Have a great weekend. Stay home. Stay safe. Stay creative. And I'll see you on Monday. Tarabi.